March 7, 2023, Charter Review Commission meeting. First thing, uh, before we start on our meeting items, we are having a technical problem tonight. The live stream of this meeting may look different, but the recording will be the same as previous recordings. Right. Okay, first on the agenda, the call to order. Lindsay, would you call the roll? Summer? Here. McDonald? Here. Casey? Here. Up? Here. Allender? Here. The Hart? Here. Frakes? Here. Waters? Here. Steele? Here. Boatwright? Here. Okay. We have a quorum. Next is the approval of the February 21, 2023 minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review those? Motion to approve. Second. And second. All in favor of approval of the minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimously approved. Okay, announcements. Um, we did receive. Thank you, Lindsay, for sending everything else so promptly to us. Um, did everyone get a chance to look at the documents that Lindsay emailed to us? It included some information from staff and the um, amendments that we voted on. Heard of any discussion of any of those items? Anything else? Any announcements? Okay, so we'll get right into it. Um, and I, I wasn't in person last meeting, so I think I kept good notes. I have a little trouble seeing everyone, but I believe that the first thing that we're going to start with today is section 2.11, city management analyst. Is that what you showed, Lindsay? Yes. And um, city manager Walker had reviewed that section and some subsequent sections of the charter and sent us his recommendations on that. We had some discussion at the previous meeting. His recommendations were to delete section 211 in its entirety and to leave sections 2.26 and 2.27, um, which allows the city to keep this position or however they would like to revise it, rename it, requalify it. Um, but it does take the title city management analyst out of the charter requirements. So, and, and I would, suggest when we get to 2.26 and 2.27 that we look at those because we'll have to do some modification of those to take this name out if it's voted to delete it. Any discussion on that? Much. I, I wish um, Mr. Walker was here, but I have a question. And he's on his way. He just he had a meeting that ran long. He'll be here in a few minutes. Well, I, I guess I can make my comments now. Okay. Everyone else can digest them. But at any rate, you know, it seemed to me that uh, the title should be changed. It should be in the city auditor and current auditor. I don't have a problem with that. But then he primarily suggests that we just do away with that provision. And my question to him is, you know, I would think that a, an internal auditor would be an important tool for the uh, city council and mayor. And I, I would like to hear your rationale about abolishing that position. Uh, that was what an internal auditor would, would do would not be covered by the later provisions providing for annual audit. In addition, the uh, the elimination of section 2.27 uh, doesn't really uh, doesn't really work. It, it would seem like that we should have a provision that the council annually review the objectives of the city departments, et cetera, and make a, a public report. On uh, Mr. Walter's alternate 
suggest his ultimate suggestion was an amendment to section two one one that provided at the bottom that the city auditor would not less frequently than annually evaluate the efficiency performance goals, et cetera, and make public those evaluations and eliminate point two two seven. Well, I, I don't think it should be up to the city auditor to make public his evaluations. I think that should be for city council. So, I mean, the city auditor can make uh, reports to the city council, but then it would be up to the city council to make, uh, to give their evaluations public view. And that would not be a job for the city auditor. So, that's my two cents. Any other discussion? <coughs> Well, one thing that Mr. Walker failed to add to that, we discussed it last time, but he didn't put it in his writing, is that 2.13 can address the issue because it gives the power to the council to hire uh, as needed. So he, he felt, and I agree, that that gives, that gives the council the authority to continue to hire, but it just doesn't, it doesn't put it in the charter. And Mr. Allender, he, Mr. Walker did recommend that we keep 2.27. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Mr. Walker did recommend we keep 2.27. I didn't read it that way. Okay. And I apologize to you, I'm having a, I've got an appointment with my ear, nose, and throat doctor on Friday. I can't hear very well. Okay, do you have his March 2nd, 2023 memo? I believe so, and if, if I'm, Looking at it correctly, he has 2.27 red line. On. Um, and he's take, taking it out completely. On the second. On the second page, the second underlined heading, proposed language for commission consideration. Do you see that? I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Right here. For commission consideration. I think so uh, part of the confusion might be and, and and again I think Mr. Walker will probably be best to address this but it says in the the section that uh, right under proposed language for commission consideration it says by deleting section 2.11 in its entirety, the commission could then leave sections 2.26 and 2.27 in their current form as these would be obligations the city council must fulfill, but would be free to choose to how to include this on, on an annual basis. If, so the next paragraph says, if current or future city councils find this function to be essential, it should be adopted in the city code and modified as necessary to meet the needs of the present time. In this case, I would recommend the following amended language. So I think he, he's got these two different options here, and I think that's, the, that's, probably, that's partially what's causing the confusion. Because to Mr. Allender's point, later on, if you, if you look down, section in this scenario, section 2.27 is redlined out. Oh, I see. So I think that's the confusion is he's sort of proposing, he's giving two different avenues to approach this. And, and I think that's where the confusion is coming from. So I, I think, because I know that Mr. Walker isn't, you know, attempting to eliminate the position entirely. Part of the issue has been with the restrictions placed on this position in the charter, it has been challenging to recruit and fill the position. How it's working. How it's working currently, because, for, and there's a number of factors. So for one thing, um, it's, you know, title the management analyst, you know, that isn't, while that position exists in municipal government, it's typically, it's not what this is designed for. And so that's where the auditor comes from. So part of the, I think the, the issue and the confusion comes from the terminology. Another issue has been that it currently says, you know, no other, uh, person can perform this role in the city government and that I, you know, I, there's also time limits on, on who can serve and that sort of thing. So it makes it difficult, you know, so someone couldn't be moved into that position who's currently working for the city. They have to come from external, they have to be an external candidate. 
Um, and, you know, and then beyond that, there's also, you know, salary considerations, which is beyond what's here. Uh, but I know, you know, the, it, it took the, the last uh, management analyst, I think it took them about a year to hire him. And he recently left after, I think, about eight months. And so, and my, my time may be a little off, but he it, it took longer to, to hire him than I know he was here. I remember, I, I know that for sure. And so that's part of the issue here is not that the position shouldn't be there in some way, shape, or form, but with the current restrictions placed on it, it makes it difficult. And, and beyond that, there isn't really a backup plan that's in place. So while that position was vacant, you know, again, the council can't force someone to, to accept the position. And so while that position was vacant, we, you know, sort of, we, we did the best we could to, to satisfy the, the charter requirements by utilizing other um, contractors to perform that work. But that's clearly not what the charter wants. The charter wants it to be one person full time in house. I think he said something, something about the word of most people were referring to it as auditor, as if you needed a CPA degree. And so he said there was certainly some pause for applicants thinking, well, I'm no CPA. I wouldn't apply for a city auditor. Sure. I think so, yeah, there's, definitely some, there's definitely some disconnect. So well, welcome to the fun. Hi. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so after doing some research, the the only cities I could find around us that had a defined position were larger communities, Kansas City, and then the unified government, um, KCK. The other communities had charter requirements to do an independent annual financial audit. A few of them had provisions that said that, you know, the council and or city manager could call for performance audits, but most of that was contained in city code which then laid out a process for how a performance audit could be called for. Um, so it wasn't a position that was very common, particularly among cities our size, though the performance of the function um, was, was fairly common. But the, the function being the performance audits and then the annual financial audit. So if I'm understanding things correctly, I really like the term internal auditor for uh, to me, that really specifies exactly what you're looking for. And if, as you noted on section 211, you know, we've stricken out most of it, but the one sentence that, you know, makes the most sense is that includes continuous investigation of the works of all departments of the city. And to me, that exactly describes what the position is. But then the particulars is the suggestion to move that to a different part of the, not, not the charter but more specific elements in, into the code, in a different right. document. Right, into the city code of ordinances, which is still adopted by and can only be amended by an act of the city council. So it has some more formality to it, um, legal authority, but future councils could amend that from time to time as is needed in their opinion for the community to meet the needs of, of the residents and the council. And since this was such a difficult, or is a difficult position to fill, you know, maybe changing up the name of it might give a different appearance. That has been, again, my personal experience and then the feedback I've heard from others is what we're calling it is not catching the eye of the candidate that we would want to be, and then vice versa. We may be missing candidates because they're not seeing a title they're more familiar with in their profession. And then can we have like a backup in here that, you know, if we're unable to find someone to be in that position full time, that we can go out and have an, you know, independent auditor hired? So I, I wrote it in a way, um, and, and you, Jeremy, please opine on this, but I tried to provide that flexibility by having it say that there shall be this position that shall be elected by the act of the council meaning that the council can determine is that a full-time employee, is that a part-time employee, is that a contract with an outside audit firm? What does that, you know, how does that meet the needs of the council and the community at that particular moment in time? Can you, can you clarify what your recommendation is? Because I think there's some, there's, because of the different 
options here. I think there's some confusion from yeah. them on exactly at least what on, on what you would recommend. Right. So, you know, if we were starting from scratch, I, I based on what I saw from other cities, I would recommend getting rid of 211 altogether. And then councils can decide, do they want to have a performance audit performed annually, semi-annually, quarterly, whatever that might look like. However, we aren't starting from scratch, and I recognize that, you know, perhaps this position gives our community some level of assurance that there's an independent party that's, you know, not the fox watching the hen house. And having then the language in 211 that I have there would be my recommendation of how to perform the function but still give latitude to get it done without being locked into saying we have to go hire a full-time employee to, to do this. Could we potentially take it one step further and add the word or words, the city council at its pleasure or if it decides to hire versus forcing a position? It's so instead of there shall, there, there may be. That's. I mean, that, that's yeah. That's within obviously within your prerogative to make that recommendation. That that would that would take it from the mandatory that it is now to to an optional position that you know at the discretion of the city council. That's what I'm hearing is that the mandatory is, is a little bit of it, and I'm really talking to you guys, and that is that the mandatory part of it is a little bit of a hitch because it it seems like that sometimes. It's necessary, and sometimes that position isn't. I don't know. I've been involved in a lot of organizations, but I think internal auditor is a very, very, very important position. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've got department heads, people running different things, and you have somebody keeping an eye on it. I mean, you know, it's kind of like you don't have the same person writing the checks and balancing the checkbook. So, I mean, I'm not running the city. No, oh, absolutely not. Not I'm taken not, that way. But, I mean, that's the way I feel about things. I've always felt that have somebody check the checker. And I, and I think that's an important position. And if it's temporary and may or may not be, or they can change it around, that might deter applications of somebody looking, f you know, for a career at it. Or, you know, it may or may not be a few months. It may be a year, maybe six months. So. That's, that's very true. You got to kind of watch, you know, somebody that's going to be a pretty high task. There's a lot of departments, a lot going on, as we know. And then you come, you know, that's just a thought of you don't want to deter, you know, it may or may not be floating through the air whether you're going to work or not or have the job. So I think that's a very good point. Um, yeah. Cool, right? yeah, no, <laughs> I'm no I'm, I'm just saying for real, of uh no. It's it's the check the checker is standard now, but you also I don't think want to deter somebody that may be a four or five month a year job or something like that. But I wouldn't if you got a good candidate you'd want them to stick around like you do. So is the consensus of this group that we leave two point one one in with the modifications that Mr. Walker has recommended? I know I'm talking a lot, and I need to shut up. But anyway, I, I don't have a problem with the modification except that last paragraph, and I've had questions about that. And again, assuming we're leaving in uh, 2.27, um, I don't believe that the city auditor or the internal auditor, how we label this person, should evaluate performances and make those make public those evaluations. I don't think that's a job of the internal auditor. Think it's up to city council. Are you uh, talking about section 2.27? No, at the bottom of 211. Well, right. Uh, yeah, so I think the idea, and Mr. Walker, correct me if I'm wrong, is that, you know, he, he's a limit. What his suggestion here is to eliminate 2.27, which says annual evaluation by council. The council, no less frequently than annually, shall evaluate the efficiency, performance, goals, and objective of all city functions and facets of the city administration and shall make the public those evaluations. That function is done by the, man the management analyst or auditor. The council wouldn't be doing that themselves. That... I'm with you. Okay. But as far as making it public, reporting to the public, 
that is not the job of the internal auditor. That's the job oh. of the city council. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, then, I mean, so let, let me throw this out. Then the last line, then, what if it said, the city auditor, no less frequently than annually, shall evaluate the efficiency, performance, goals, and objectives of all city functions and facets of the city administration and shall report those findings to the city council? I agree. Yes. 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 Okay. And that's leaving 227 in. I still think it should be the responsibility of the city council. Okay, I don't think I mean I don't think they're mutually exclusive. So, okay. I like the extra words um, wherever we put them and wherever they're used because it sounds as if this position is for the efficiency, performance goals, objectives, process, you know, um, evaluation as opposed to just works. I'm not sure if we just you know, had it be here, investigation of the works of all department, um, that that would give enough clarification that we really want it to be process improvement sure. performance. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I do probably think shouldn't, shouldn't, the city auditor should not evaluate goals and objectives. That's, I would think that's a city auditor's job. Yeah, evaluate the process. That's, exact, that's a good point. Very good. That's the city council's job. Yep. I agree with you. Because the departments will have their management and their directors and things like that listed in the process, evaluate the process. Does anybody have any suggestions on how we might be able to make this um, hold up until the next time this charter is reviewed by adding something to the effect that? the title could be subject to change rather than, I mean, not the, the responsibility is not subject to change, but the title itself could be changed as the market dictated or I'm really thinking out loud here. Because that, I'm sure at some point the uh, management analyst worked and now it doesn't. The city auditor be outdated at some point. Um, I like I internal know. auditor. I don't know. Internal you auditor. Yeah, you, you like that too. Man. Yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that word makes sense to me. That's what the job is. Is there a way to consolidate that section two point two seven? into the 211 at the very end making the city council because it feels like we're repeating the same words almost identically is if we change it over and say that shall make not make public those evaluations but shall you know give them to the city council of whom could review them at that time can we combine those two sections in one i think 227 two, 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 does say you're right the last paragraph is 2.11. Oh, I, I think I think that was Mr. Walker's goal. I think you're right. Was was by you know was to to, to eliminate 227 and move it up there. I agree. But uh, obviously that's up to you know he may he can he can clarify if that's different and that's up to you all. You know the 227 talks about the city council the one's going to make this stuff public. If you just add that at the end of this right. the and just say you know what we're saying the city administration period. It's up to the city council shall make those public those evaluations public or yeah. however you want to work. And we'll evaluate them annually or whatever. Whatever. I think you should keep them separate and distinct because what the city auditor or the internal auditor gives to the city council may not be what they their evaluation what they want to make public. I mean I, I don't think that they should be required to take whatever the internal auditor gives them and makes. How is it handled currently? The um, the city council, through their audit and finance committee, is assigning a work plan each year to the management analyst, and then the management analyst is to provide an annual report of 
their activities, their investigations, status, kind of a status report, if you will. I am not aware of any kind of annual report being produced by the council of their own independent evaluation other than their adopted budget every year, which is not a report of the efficiencies, the performance, et cetera. It's a, here's your resources to accomplish the assignments we're giving you for this coming year. And are those shared with the public then? The, the uh, management findings. analyst reports. <clears throat> that shared to the council and the council does share that with the public? That's correct. Okay. Is it part of a meeting, a, a city council meeting agenda to sort of a note <laughs> that it's available or how is it made public? Is it just online? Online is my understanding. So the audit and finance committee meeting, which is of course public, but you know may not be attended by all based on when it's held, um, but it's presented there and then uploaded onto the city website. There's a section for the management analyst to produce their reports and findings and memos, et cetera. And do you think that's the intent of this old charter section? So this is total speculation, but here's, here's my best guess. They wanted to make certain that somebody was making sure that all of these functions and services, et cetera, was flowing the way it was intended to, you have to, you know, of course, the city was much smaller at the time this was produced, fewer departments, smaller staff sizes, et cetera. So it may have been less of a laborious task for somebody to perform, but I believe this was included to provide the community with assurance that somebody was going to be checking in on these departments each year and make certain that they were adhering to the assignments, the policies, the procedures that they were tasked with and that they were doing so in the most efficient manner possible. I think over time that has become more and more a part of how the audit and finance committee uses this management analyst position. Okay, so <clears throat> correct me if I'm wrong, it sounds like from the discussion that this commission wants to keep the auditor type position in the charter or make it optional by using may? No, you want to keep it? I want to keep it. And rename it. Okay. Rename it to internal auditor. Um, and make make it the council's responsibility to report annually from the findings of the audit. The findings? Oh. The results of the audit are, yeah. Now, my point was the city got the internal auditor reports to the council. And then it's up to the council to, you know, 227, I would have had a problem with that. Uh, that you know, city council uh, make reports to the public and I don't know okay. I think they probably should. Right. You know, with budgets or what's they're doing. And do you think two two seven can be incorporated into two point one one? I think it should be left where it is. Left where it is. Let me ask a question on on that last part of two eleven, which say that the internal auditor shall evaluate the efficiency, performance, goals, and objectives. Are we really going to have them check the goals and objectives? That part to me should be thrown out. They should be looking at the efficiency and performance of, uh, in, in, of all city functions and facets. And or how they come up with those goals and objectives. Yeah, and that then the process. council should be looking at goals and objectives, however they tie into the overall city's goals. And I think there's that separation. So you're saying 2.27 is worded 
we want to leave that. Well, yeah, I mean, they're going to, I think the council would be responsible for those goals and objectives, probably right. all of that. Yeah. The auditor is going to be looking at the efficiency and performance of all city functions. They're not going to be looking at their goals and their objectives. Okay. They might look to make sure that they're aligned with them or that they're functioning, but they're not going to be rewriting their goals or objectives in those different departments. That's up to those departments to set those. Okay. So do we want to, with Lindsay's assistance, work through 2.11 and reword it and do our strikes and our additions, changes? Yes. Okay. So to help Lindsay get started, <laughs> are uh, other than, so, so we want to change it to from city auditor to internal auditor. Okay, and then is is what is currently shown as deleted <clears throat> up until the new last paragraph. Is everyone generally in agreement on that? Yes, well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm looking at Zach's um, Mr. Walker's memo. Yeah, his markup. It, Mr. Walker's markup. That's what I'm looking at. Yes. So yes. it shows several changes up until. We get to that the, the new that that new last sentence. Is everyone generally in agreement on that? I, I just want to say I I am in agreement with it because I feel like that's a job description okay. that right. should be in. Okay, you already got that. Yep. Okay. I change it to the internal order. Okay. I can make it bigger. I'm sorry. Where are we going to take it? Where it? There shall be, make it there, maybe. Well, I, I haven't heard a cons. I, <laughs> I I, I'm hearing one. mixed. I'm hearing mixed answers on that one. So the shall. We agree that should be shall, so, rather than may. That's my opinion. Okay. I think, I, personally, I think if you're going to leave it in the charter, it should least, be shall. That's I agree. Yeah. Too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. If, if, one one okay. consideration, if, if you're so, if, yeah, to leave it to leave it as shall, I, it, one consideration is is then putting in there some sort of backup plan, because the the issue that has been is it is currently says shall. But if that, if, you know, if there is, again, no one can force someone into that position. So if that person, if, if there is not a person in that position, then who performs that function? City so, attorney. Well, well, well <laughs> Tom told so, that earlier. I kind of agree with that plan B. Who should get the account for that authority? I, I miss what you said, Mr. Allender. I'm sorry. Well, Tom said earlier that he believed that Section 213 gave, gives the city council the authority to, to adapt and hire someone, do whatever, uh, part time, whatever, if, if they're required to get the job done. And I, I take reading it quickly, I tend to agree. So 213 fixes your shall, and if it becomes vacant, another personnel. Full-time, part-time, contract basis. Uh, and I will tell you, uh, I think I mentioned this at the last meeting. Um, the time prior when this position came open and the council was having difficulty filling it, they started down a path of proceeding with a third-party firm because of you know, they needed somebody providing the audit function, but it was caught uh, by then Council Member DeLucy, the current language, which said it had to be a full-time employee of the city. You know, if this is struck just to say that this function <coughs> shall exist, and then in concert with 2.13, I think that gives the council, as the elected representatives, the ability to figure out how to make sure the function's being performed, not backed into a corner with just one outcome. Okay. There you go. Okay, so then that takes us to 
that the last line that Mr. Walker had in there, what, what I was hearing from the group generally is to leave that except for, so it's going to, what, what I think it would say is the internal auditor, no less frequently than annually, shall evaluate the efficiency performance, the, the efficiency and performance of all city functions and facets of the city administration and shall report said findings to the city council. Yes. Is that what I'm hearing? I'm changing it. Okay. Yeah. I think this is generally where they're headed. Can you all see, can everybody see that? Am I in the way? Can you scroll up or move that up a little bit? Or the other way, I'm sorry, there you go, thanks. Can it be enlarged a little bit? Do you want me to tell you what's this? No less frequently than annually, comma, shall evaluate the efficiency and performance. Yes, the efficiency and performance of all city functions and facets of the city administration and shall report said findings to the city council. How does that look? The, the one sentence that's kind of above that that says the, the internal auditor's duty shall include the continuous investigation of the works of all departments. Process is what we decide. Right? Do we want to say continuous investigation? I mean, that looks like they're going to, you know, just. That's all they're focusing on. I mean, they're going to have so many things to focus on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, try to find some. Mm -hmm. okay. I, mm -hmm. I, I agree that continuous should be taken out. I think yeah. it should be added to be the investigation of all the departments of the city as directed by the city council and city manager or something to that effect. It, it can be that, except for the part about directed by the city manager right. because this position intentionally is separate from the city manager. Yeah. Now they currently get their assignment from, you said the audit finance committee? Yes, sir. Would yes, that, sir. Would that continue here? Well, again, that could become, you know, future councils may decide they don't want an audit and finance committee. So this gives them that latitude gotcha. to adjust over time. So just say include the investigation of the functions or processes or however you want to put that. And you works. wanted to change works to, to process. functions and processes. Functions? Yeah, functions and processes. Functions and processes. Of all departments of the city. Processes. Of all departments of the city at the direction of the city council. Mm -hmm. And then the very, very end, Lindsay, just the word T-O after findings, findings to the city council. Thank you. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. I'm good with that. Any more discussion on 2.11? We need to add contracts to all those factors. I know. Okay. All right. Are we ready to have a motion to I adopt? I make that? a motion. We accept the language as as correct as on the as we just finished the final line. And I'll second what he said. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Thank you. I get to vote. What did you say? Vote. Thank goodness we're done with that section. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can say that in church. Every time. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs>
So right. I'm just to okay. just to clarify, and and, and and this is fine. That's what was intended. At this point, no, there haven't been any changes to 2.27. So that's still intact as it is, unless and until you all say something different. Yeah, let's we'll work our way to that. Okay, okay. Just I'm, well, we, we were talking <laughs> right. about it as part of this, right. so I just want to make sure everyone is clear that that hasn't changed. Okay. Not yet. Okay, so next is 2.12 City Clerk. I, I did not see anything that needed changed in the City Clerk section. However, this is kind of a continuing question I have is, should there be some sort of allowance for converting from paper records to electronic records? The possibility of doing that, not that we have to. I don't know what other cities are doing. I think most do keep paper records of ordinances and resolutions, but I could see that changing. I mean, again, uh, that would be reasonable. That's a that's up to you all. I mean, yeah, that that makes sense. I'm, as I'm reading it, it you know, it talks about you know keeping them in a bound volume and that sort of thing. I mean, I I I can't say exactly, and maybe Mr. Walker can, um, if there if if a bound volume currently exists uh, or or not. Uh, but if you you know thought it was appropriate to give some flexibility there, then that would be reasonable. I have a question. Who's your dad? <laughs> <laughs> Who's my dad? <laughs> His name's Gary Cover. No, Gary, very well. No, I have a By the way you talk, something ring a bell. Okay, got it. <laughs> and lost a little bit. Good. How's he doing? <laughs> He's doing well. Thank you. Okay. Let's see where that maybe we would want to add a little wording to allow for that. I guess do we know? Do they still do it that way? Let's see. Is it an onerous? Is it typical? I personally see cities going towards electronic records. Right. Um, I don't know if they're there I, don't, now or. I would imagine we're still keeping paper, some paper records. Uh, yeah, I mean, there there are some, you know, the original ordinances and, and all of those that are signed and everything, those are still, those are definitely still kept in paper form. Uh, that much I know. Maybe Mr. Walker can add to that. So I, I could stand to be wrong here. It's been known to happen, but I am not aware of a bound book of the proceedings of the council. Um, that's all happening digitized now. The council's getting their agendas sent to them on a tablet. They, they can have it printed off if they want, but the clerk is operating off of all digital records now. If the city were to produce a, like, like this memo that I've written for you, you know, that's a paper record, you know, we have to file that in accordance with Missouri Sunshine Law and keep it for a certain number of years before those records can be destroyed. Um, so those kind of paper records are still existing, but most of our business is digitized now. And what is the... What would the term for that be? Electronic record? Digital record? Does anyone know? Well, it, I think it says it in there. It says documents, records. But, but I also see it could say digital records. Electronically stored <clears throat> documents or something of that nature. File. <laughs> If you open that up, do you also then need to address security of said electronic digital? Or because you did, didn't hear with printed hard copy, I guess you wouldn't there. But a lot of times, I know when we get into that digital electronic space, we talk security. Does the city have a policy on keeping electronic records? 
just in accordance with the so in your copy of the section we're in down here where it says um, shall be custodian of the seal of the city right before that it talked about shall be custodian of such documents records and archives as may be provided by applicable law or ordinance that is in keeping with the Missouri Sunshine Law, which spells out how long and in what way those records have to be retained. So state law might change. This just is saying whatever state law is, we'll adhere to that. So that part I like. Yeah, um, I, don't even, I don't even think we need to add like electronic to that because it talks about documents and records how with this cap. Yeah. The, the only thing in this section that I am fairly certain is antiquated is this mysterious bound book. Right. Yeah. Could you bring us a copy of that next week? If I find it, I will. What is this? Yeah, can we just delete that? Or do we need to want to check on it first to see how they're doing it to make sure we don't step in something? <laughs> Or maybe they're not sure they were supposed to do that. That was totally hard for all of them. I've seen that the term books before, book or books, and I don't know if that includes electronic records. My own volume or journal is what I was thinking. Oh, saying. that wouldn't. No. That's all I was thinking. The bound volume that the city manager has and the journal, that's all I was thinking. Wouldn't need to be paper. What keeps coming to my mind is, and I have no idea if it's ap applicable, but in corporate, they still require you to keep your hard copy corporate book. You know, and Secretary of State of Missouri requires that with your minutes and everything. So it makes me wonder, one, let's fix it all so we business owners don't have to do that. But secondly, is that part of that statute for state? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I have not seen anything in the state law that requires a bound book, paper, hard copy. It might not need to be addressed at all because it says custodian. They would be, if anybody needs it, refers to it, look at an old charter, there it is. They would be that custodian. So it may be 212, we can go right to 213, but I'm just saying that I think it's descriptive of what we have and it gives them the ability to obviously obviously advance and not keeping the records i think that's i i yeah i'm just with uh mr Walker, law. is that Re be a bound volume law. what happens if there's a fire i'm pretty sure they're not down at the mayor's office are they they're probably in the, <laughs> <laughs> the mysterious bound volumes well could you can could we consider just adding to that or or electronic like, uh, yeah. as allowed by law or something something like that and I'm, I'm thinking of future i think the fire department independence is top notch spectacular <laughs> and i think they would save all records at the city hall i'm totally teasing but i do see what you're saying <laughs> because when you do advance you, you certainly could. It's a whole different council or somebody say, hey, we got to agree with that, actually. Maybe add a little that says, you know, technology shall provide the city clerk to. Yeah, I think you could add book or books, physical or electronic, yeah. and that covers it. Yeah. Or Great. books or electronic. That's physical or electronic. Okay. Um. I stand corrected. The clerk tells me that because of the charter, she keeps a binder of the minutes in the basement of City Hall. It's not as fancy as it used to be, she says. So there you go. How are the really old records kept? Are they all still? She says they are in a bound they are still book. Bound. Now they're just in a three ring binder. <laughs> Uh, going back to 1821? Or She's also willing to give you a tour. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, commercial printer in me says, let's print everything. <laughs> <laughs> That's 
a motion. Does she have the origin and the necessity of that? Since you have her on the, you know, phone there. Yeah, I'm gonna find out. I'm I'm doing some digging here. Okay. But that is good wherever uh, books books or electronics, just a slash. Yeah. Agree to it and then Okay. Because the duties are gonna be the same. I, I, I think, think that those old documents have to be preserved. I think they, I know they are in Washington. I know they are in They're fireproof stuff now. I totally get that, though. Because, you know, somebody okay. goes to that devastation, you're kind of screwed there. But the part of it is, they could probably use a couple of words or a slash in here and be good. She so, says because we didn't have digital records, you know, in 1960, whatever, we had to print copies of the minutes in case people wanted to come in and see what had happened at the council meeting. So this is in a pre-internet, pre-City 7 era, where if you wanted to find out everything that happened at the last council meeting, you could come in and see a physical record of what transpired. We have been. I, I think we need, her life I, know, I think the city needs to have the alternative to store those digitally. Um, and so I agree. Okay. So should we just what, what did you suggest that we just add? Right, right after book. Yeah, go ahead. Right after book or books, you just add comma or or in parentheses physical or electronic. Electronically or electronic. Kept to the yeah, for the for the yeah. Okay. Right. What about the the bound volumes? The very same language. response after that in a bound volume, physical or electronic, because yeah, the older ones are electronic be. Docu documents are we call them bound. Okay, yeah. all right. I agree. I make a motion to and then, and add, also add that after <laughs> the bound volume. With it being electronic, should we add the word files in there too? If we say documents, or is that documents, records, and archives, should we throw files in there as well? Because it could be, I don't know. Files, records. You mean like electronic files? Yeah. I mean, because if we're going to go electronic, they're going to have to maintain that too. And we talked about cyber, you know, the security issue. I would imagine that. Most of the other records of the city are probably already electronic. I think what we're concerned with here are meeting records, council meeting records, ordinances, resolutions. But that's how I read it, yes. Okay. <clears throat> you good with that? Yeah, except that where was the bound? Right in that same sentence. Right in that yeah. Passed it by a, by in a bound volume. In a bound volume, to be physical or electronic. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you for discussion of that. Do I have a motion to approve that change? So moved. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Oh, I'm moving right along. Okay, 2.13, other personnel appointed by the council. What was the original intent of 213? It talks about to assist the council or individual council members in undertaking their duties. So I can't tell you the original intent for certain, but I can, since the time this was written, so positions that aren't mentioned in there that have since been created have been, um, that I know of, an executive assistant to the city council and an executive assistant to the mayor. 
I think at one time there was even a assistant management analyst position that reported to the council. Um, so I think this language, if I understand correctly, allowed the council to create additional positions in the civil service in case they needed help as the city grew and, and developed and built out. Um, you know, interesting when it talks about, you know, as many as they need. In Kansas City, they all 13 members of the council have their own assistant. Um, so I, I think it gives them the flexibility to adjust as they need to. Um, but not define specifically what those positions are. I'm actually good with those people. Does anyone have any discussion on whether this needs to stay or be removed? Any changes? Well, we talked about it being the help to the internal uh, auditor, so I think it needs to stay. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Okay. Let's move on to 2.14. Relation of personnel appointed by the council to the administrative service. Either the internal well, auditor. Or the language of management auditor. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. In other places, it was management analyst. Pardon? Other places, it was management analyst, mm -hmm. not management auditor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. To internal. Now, is this something that we feel like needs to stay in the code if we're trying to, you know, move unnecessary items, I mean, stay in the charter if we're trying to maybe move some things into the code? Yeah, because 211 we just did, and 13, give that right, but the 214 is kind of redundant with the internal auditor, which would be in the office of the city manager, correct? And then 213 gives the city council the ability to hire as they see fit. So 214 may be redundant language to both that we just went over. Personal appointment, personnel appointment. So that's what we just did. Personal appointment to 213. I see that 214 as being given them the authority of what their powers are once they're appointed in 213. Yeah, it's kind of like back up to that. Yes. Because it talks about giving them access to all books and records. Right. Does that need to be in the city charter? Or is that more something for another document? Since it's a little bit more descriptive of their duties. Yeah, because I think 11 and 12, 11 and 13 are, are 2.14 in my head. In its entirety now, I know that they're not. To, to his point, somewhere we're gonna make sure the authority's still there for them to do what they're doing. Yeah. And I don't know if that's what this is. Not personal. I, I, I don't hear from my group. Yeah, come on, I think no, go ahead. 14 is. So this is describing you can't double? Is that what the other? No, it's really saying that the city can't appoint. Right. Can be the parks and rec. Yes. yes. Right. So I, I think the the point of this section is to clarify the the relationship between those council appointed positions, such as the internal auditor and city clerk, relative to the city manager. And and the point of this is to make it clear that that those are under that those positions, any council appointed positions, can't ever cross over and fall under the purview of the city manager. That's and, and so I don't know that it's redundant to the other sections. I think it reinforces the intent of those other sections. So in terms of keeping it, I think at this, obviously there's, you know, there's a, there was a discussion about the internal auditor position in the charter and it was determined that that, that need to stay there. Obviously the city clerk position is gonna stay there. So I think to the extent those positions are existing in the charter, it makes sense to, to leave 
this language to so it's clear where those relationships are. Yeah, I agree. I was, I was wrong. Yeah. Okay. Because it has to do with people. Okay. I got you said much better than that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we'll leave 2.14 and move to 2.15. Council not to interfere with administrative services. My... Jackie, I'm sorry, do, do we need to vote on those two very small changes? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, oh, we do. Or is that just we fitting do. from the last title change? We, can start we do need to vote on okay. the two corrections of the position. to correct. You okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes. Thank you for reminding me. Okay, now to 2.15. Uh, again, my first thought when I read through this was could this be made more concise? Because um, it's. I think it's an important point that the council doesn't in interfere with administrative services, the city manager's job. But I, I don't know that it's worded in the best way, and I liked um, 2.06 of the model charter. Also, this has some criminal penalties in it, which is another issue. So 2.06, if you have that document, And I think what I meant was 2.06B. Okay. Might want to change the name of it, but. I'm pulling it up here. What section? 2.06B. It's on page 18 and 19. Let's see. So I like B and C in the model charter language. And I think it's well written and I think it's shorter. And if you want to look at it and see if maybe we could replace 2.15 with this. These are a lot more concise mm -hmm. than what we have up there with that spaghetti. Mm -hmm. B and C. Mr. Walker, do you have any comments on that? Did you have a chance to look at it? I, I like the model charter language better because it's streamlined. You know, why use one word or when, you know. So I, I think having that, that streamlined language still preserves the intent without losing um, any sort of reference to it. I think it's a very important section to have in the charter. Um, because this issue I know comes up every city. Um, I don't know if we need paragraph A. I think that's covered elsewhere. So does there any, any recommendation to strike this and replace it with the language of 2.06B e and C in the model charter? I think we need to change the title of it from the charter, uh, from the model. So if on the model, Charter, if they violate it, what does that? I mean, I don't know that I agree with the twenty-five to five hundred dollar fine, but what does that do to discipline them? If I remember correctly, I think there's a general. I don't know what 
what to call it, um, section uh, violations of the charter are cause for removal or some, some language mm -hmm. like that later on. Is, did you, is that correct, Jeremy? Um, <clears throat> well, there's, you got it. You, the, I mean, there is is a removal section, but it's it's based on, as my recollection is, the only grounds for removal that it addresses are based on qualifications. So if, and I, let me see, I mean, we can, I, we're, we'll get to that later. So I, I can, I can see if I can find what that section is and see if you, and, and so in theory, you could connect those two sections together. I can tell you, I mean, right now it says that all prosecutions for violation of this section shall be instituted by the prosecuting attorney of Jackson County. I mean, obviously that's, you know, not without, you know, outside of our purview. I mean, and, and I can tell you my, my personally, I think that's unlikely to happen. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't know that the the teeth that has right now i don't think are very likely uh so if you wanted to give it some different teeth then i think that's doable what you should get uh i'm gonna find that i, I kind of agree with you all that you're saying just uh just so real penalty. quickly on page 22 section 5.5 5 talks about penalizing and charging people I don't know if that's the one you're looking for. In our charter? Yeah. Five, 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 five. Page 22, 5.5. 5. Well, that's only for 5.1 through 5.4. 5. That's another one that we'll have to discuss with the same. Yeah, that's not the one I had. Let me, let me see if I can. Penalty section. 5.4. Lindsay, can you do a word search in the Word document? The what word would you like me to search for? Violation? Or... Yes. Okay. That kind of answers my question. But I, I, why don't we just leave it alone? Is it working? Yeah. Is it something that might be handled in the ethics? Like you were talking Board about section five, 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 five four, maybe a new provision. Just open it up, broaden right. it. Right. I think I think we I'm need to. That's a good idea. Just quickly scanning. Okay. I, I found what I was looking for, and it's in section two point three. Huh? Yeah, which obviously has already been discussed. So section two point three talks about the qualifications of the members. And then if you go to the end of section 2.3, it says the council shall not have power to impeach its members except as otherwise provided by this section. So it, and the difference being under the current language, it's saying essentially removal, I don't have it in front of me now, but basically removal is if you're convicted of this crime, then you are removed from office, right? The under, but this is for the council 
having the ability to impeach or remove someone. And the only power they have to do that is based on qualifications. So I think the question to you all is, what do you want the teeth to be behind a violation of this section? And based on that, we can figure out where to put it. But the, 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 the way it is right now, Again, you can obviously leave it as it is, but I can tell you as a practical matter, I don't think that's likely to ever occur. So in, in the lease summit charter section 3.15, charter violation and ethics code, it, again, theirs is very clear and short. Any violation of this charter or adopted ethics code may constitute a cause for discipline up to and including removal from office. There's more to it, but read it. Uh, and you all could you know, certainly have that or similar language if you wanted to. I, I don't believe that, I, I can't recall that section existing in the current Okay, chart. I might have been thinking of this. Then. So, I... So, I think we all agree we don't want it happening. Yeah, right. We want the, we want the <laughs> section to read. The question is, what are we going to do about it? Right. Uh, I mean, yeah, that, that would, I believe that's the question is, what do you all, if, you know, you don't want this to happen, but if it does, what do you want the penalty to be? And Mr. Coleman, you're saying that the way the penalty provisions have written aren't working? Or? I'm saying that as a practical matter, so the, the way, the way the penalty, what section is this again? The way it's written currently, it the, the penalty only kicks in, it says, any such conviction of any council member shall, shall be caused for removal from office, and such council member shall be automatically removed by said conviction. Okay, so that's how, it's ha that's how it is designed to happen. The next paragraph says, all prosecutions for violations of this section shall be instituted by the prosecuting attorney of Jackson County. I, I mean, and I can't say, I, I wouldn't want to speak for the prosecuting attorney of Jackson County, but I, I will tell you that I find it I, I, unlikely that a case would ever be brought based on a violation of the charter. And if a case can't be brought, then there would be, then there is no penalty. I mean, has there one, a case ever been taken in Jackson County? I mean, I'm just curious. I'm not aware of any cases brought forward. I'm aware of conversations with the prosecuting attorney and it's what Mr. Cover's saying. They're, you know, trying to keep their head above water I'm with sure homicides and you know, drug trafficking cases, and so a violation of the, yeah, no, I'm, I'm just making a point that putting it on the prosecutor to worry about the conduct of an independent city council member is not realistic. My suggestion would be. Yeah, if, this, if it gets that, they'll be after it anyway. It won't be for some little stuff. My suggestion would be that we add, if we don't already have one, a section in Article 5 that makes any violation of the charter cause for removal or some cause, wording like that. Cause for removal. Yeah. That's, that's the, I yeah, would it be trust a board, an arbitrator or a mediator? It needs to be something well, that can make a determination. And, and I'll jump in on that, Mr. McDonald. That's that's I will. That has been the problem. No one knows where to take right. this stuff. You know, they wonder: Is it the Board of Ethics? Is the council supposed to handle it? So, that term "charter violation" gets thrown around a lot. A lot. But there's no recourse so associated with it. Lee Summit. The rest of Lee Summit says the council shall not impose any such discipline upon a member or the mayor unless such sanctions receive an affirmative vote of two-thirds of the members of the entire council, including the mayor. They, they think it's political. I, totally. yeah, it, it yeah. can. Yes, sir. They, I believe, I've heard talk, but it had not seen it happen. That's a problem. Don't councils also have the ability to censure each other? Yeah, I mean, so, 
<clears throat> I, what the charter currently does is it is very clear on on you know the ultimate penalty for just that one the qualification section which is that they can be removed by the council for a, for not failing to meet the qualifications and, and i believe right or wrong it the charter in, is intentional in that because they they didn't want it to get political right and that's why i think it is so narrowly defined with only relating to qualifications because the idea being that that in theory is much more you know clear cut and and so if there's a violation of qualifications they are subject removed by the council but but that's but that's it and so what it means is for any other you know the council is set up to to police itself right so to the extent there are other issues whether those you know that the council sees with itself beyond a a failure to qualify under that section then you know then it's up to them i mean up normally for for statutory cities it's up to and including removal or impeachment but that's off the table except for that section so really you're talking about you know a you know a, a some sort of censure if they want to you know i mean they can have a private talking to uh but other than that it's some sort of you know public censure essentially being to you know embarrass the person into into yeah. doing the right thing or you know correcting their you know so yeah they could they could do that on their own i can't i don't believe that's really laid out that process i don't think it's laid out in the uh in their uh, rules of procedure but that wouldn't prevent it from happening because again it's just them agreeing i mean it, it doesn't have it doesn't have any teeth beyond them saying hey you screwed up and we want everybody to know about it right so as it stands there is not there uh it is a shame on them. what i'm saying here's the 500 20 25 dollars to 500 that would be if somebody the, the council member would be imposed with that fine the council well, member would be imposed by the court, is what this is saying. Oh, I got you. Yeah, okay, this is this is all predicated on a on a on a case. So, it, prosecutions shall be instituted by the prosecutor. You know, so so this is all predicated on the Jackson County prosecutor bringing a case. This this entire the, the penalty section for this for this language is all predicated on that. And so that's I mean you know that's up to you all if you think it should be something different. So if yeah, so if something was serious or something was happening or violation, there's not really much they can do other than that. Okay, that's that's, that's what that's, I meant yeah, to say, and I'm sorry yes, for cutting in there. That I was reading my head about the yeah. twenty five and five hundred, got confused about. That's not a body. I see what you're saying about the prosecutor now. Yeah. So, so for all says, intents and said, purposes, there's nothing you really could do except try to shame them. Not teeth, as a practical matter, absent this process, there isn't currently as it stands now, there wouldn't be anything for the council to do other than kind of a public admonishment or shaming. You know, the 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 penalty that's is in there, which relies on the prosecutor's office, there's nothing as a as a technical matter, it's fine to say that. It's my opinion as a practical matter, and I think Mr. Walker's opinion also, that it's unlikely that the prosecutor's office would get involved in such a case. Totally agree with that. Maybe it'll scare me. Yeah. We certainly need some language to be able to address bad behavior or inappropriate. Just for this section? Not just minimal stuff. Uh, yes. So we need okay. in this section or do you think oh, it might I, be best in five? What do you think? <clears throat> What did you put in here, Mr. City Manager? I think if we got something on 5-5, five, five, this yeah. week, right? On well, section 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, it came from... Mm -hmm. I got you. Okay. Thank you. You know, I, I think that... Um, that's what he's referring to. You know, we certainly Is need he, to address the part prosecutor? or strike the part yeah. about Jackson so County Prosecutor. Because that would be in and of itself if they've done some right. if they've done something that leads to the prosecutor, that's gonna be outside the yeah. council. Yeah. It's not gonna be um, I would 
Fragifolia, you know, a consistent, whatever. So that, that's yeah, not Yeah, we there. don't really have any power to... Yeah. So it needs to have something the where... Prosecutor. The 20, the, the, this prosecutor, Jackson County prosecution side has to come out. Yeah. And you, then we have to come up with a parliamentary... Uh, this this, this, this takes place. Session. Not just I'm pissed that I don't, I, that I, I don't like you. It's, if these things take place, we're going to be able to take these out. Okay. So... Is anyone opposed to using this model charter language? I'm not opposed to it, but I'd like to see it put in the ethics section and taken out of this section. Mm, that's an idea. Um, we are going to be getting some recommendations from the mayor's, I know I'll call it wrong, the mayor's commission. It's the mayor's advisory commission on ethics reform. Yes. I don't know when we're going to get that. So it, I don't, it's possible they've looked into it. Um, we could come back to it. So always come I, back to I, this. this section here, the first part of it really talks about the council members can't direct the appointment of any person to or removal from office. Then it gets off the rails down below where it talks about the fines for their behavior. Yeah, publicly or private. So I think we need to look She's at got that shaded perfectly work. Yeah. You're right. About that, that sentence right there is what needs to. Yeah, that's where it needs to. We need to gather some language from the charter, maybe Something. either add it like a section B. Because the first part really protects that they're not going to go after other yep. employees and stuff, mm -hmm. which needs to be in there. But that other part down there about otherwise contact such office. where you've got to highlight, I think, needs to be a, another section or re reworded definitely. Well, I, I, so what I'm hearing is you generally like the Lee Summit language, except you don't want to give the council that much power. Is that what I'm, is that what I'm hearing? Can you read the Lee Summit language one more time? Neither the city council nor any of its members shall in any manner control or demand the appointment or removal of any city administrative officer or employee whom the city manager or any subordinate of the city manager is empowered to appoint but the council may express its views and fully and freely discuss with the city manager anything pertaining to the appointment and removal of such officers and employees. I'm sorry. I mean, I think everyone, I, what I'm hearing is they're, they're generally in agreement with that, that penalty section that you read from because them. The second paragraph, C, except for the purposes of inquiries and investigations under, and it references this section, the council or its members shall deal with city officers and employees who are subject to the direction and supervision of the city manager solely through the city manager. And neither the council nor its members shall give orders to any such officer or employee, either publicly or privately. And that's the model charter language. Mm -hmm. So that's the least summit language. That was model. Model charter. That's, that's, I'm that's sorry, the model. That's the model. What I'm talking, yeah. The, the, the least the, summit. The least summit language had a penalty provision it's um kind of on its own right that's what uh, i'm saying I, I, and charter that's what, violations and ethics yes. codes is what that's called any violation of this charter or adopted ethics code may constitute a cause for discipline up to and including removal from office the council should not impose any discipline upon a member or the mayor unless such sanctions receive an affirmative vote of two-thirds of the members of the entire council, including the mayor. That's what we need. Uh, I think we need that somewhere. Absolutely. Yeah, is yeah. it in this section or is it a... Because where, where she had the part where we had just discussed striking, if we had went one more sentence that describes every bit of that and then put the penalty phase in, removing, the, removing referral to the a county prosecutor. So she goes down to if, see that notwithstanding council members and otherwise contact, that means they're not supposed to be doing that. And then it says right there, that's where it needs to start, right? Yeah, that's where the root is. If, if, if out, out. they're down out. Yeah, that's it. Any council member? To the end of that section. Okay. And then, and then the lease on the language On violation? Uh-huh. So you're okay with the first part of this paragraph? I, I, I kind of like that. It's, it does simplify it some. Yeah. So the idea would be that 
in a separate section. What I'm hearing is the ethics section. That's where you all want to put address the penalties for violations of of the charter generally. Is that what I'm hearing? Thanks, so. I I think I'd like to discuss that when we get the recommendations. You know, sure. we get to Article Five, and it's possible that we may want to come back and add it specifically. I don't I don't know. Or at least refer any, to it. Any thoughts on that? Well, we don't. In the last section, we don't put any penalty if the city clerk doesn't keep a bound volume. <laughs> right. I mean, it's kind of that's true. Well, it kind of implied that if there are violations, that there that would be the rest of the city manager's office. I can't do right. their job correctly. But I, I still think we're struggling over penalty provision. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that that's what I'm hearing from you all. I, I just read by five and I read down that it indicates that um, the city councilor is responsible for handling a violation and it also has the ability to appoint a special prosecutor. Right, and I think what, what the chair, and that's correct, that's how it is currently, that's for violations of that, of those particular sections. What I think the chair is is saying is that as far as the penalty goes, that if, if this is if you will like removing this language as it is, that then you might want to hold off to see what the the uh, the advisory commission has from the un, in ethics. Because that's chapter five, article five is where their main focus is, and that based on what you know, based on what their recommendations are. At that point, you all can decide where you want to put in these different, or whether you want one penalty section that covers everything, or you want individual penalty sections. And, and also, that relates back to the, uh, there was a memo that I that was included with your packet that based on recommendations from a special prosecutor, and that, that relates back to 5-5. So I think if you like where this is right now, but recognizing that, again, currently there really is there's no teeth, especially once you remove that, and that that's going to, you're all, will revisit that based on the recommendations you get from the that's from the advisory commission. I think that's a good idea. We can come back to it. Yeah, so my, I mean, I got the part about, we, I don't know that we need to, I don't know that we really need to go into penalty for every little thing. Because we'll be here for four August, I'm totally being sarcastic, but there is some condensed language that you brought up that would resolve it in this section right here. And ethics is just that, ethics. This. So if we've taken out the penalty phase and we added that language, we would have completed 2.15. I'm fine with that. Because, because we're going to go to 5.5 five and refer back to 2.15. Is that or fair to say? Or tie it together. Yeah. That That's what I'm getting at is so if we put in, if some I made a motion that we put in, adopt the lease summit, this or the uh, response language, it would be here and the ethics are described just as that, a separate leg, a separate arm. Also on the section more, we talked about the two model language provisions, the B and C. That those are yeah. those. Do we want to replace those with the first part of this that we haven't touched yet? The top part of 2.15? Yeah. Because it is a, a I mean, paragraph that condenses. That's Yeah, that, that yeah. is the exact same wording without filler words. Seven. So what Ms. Goldman's bringing up now is is the language from the Lee Summit Charter that Ms. Summer has referred to, just so you all can see what that what that looks like and how you feel about that. I like the way that that encompasses so many I do too. issues here. Absolutely. You know, it, it, and it, what we took out of $2,500 to $500 should be replaced with something. Right. In the section of, I'm going to address, 215 is going to address uh, probably bad behavior. And this gives the ability to address the bad behavior rather than just say, if this happens, we have nothing to do. Well, we may put this here and it may show up. Right. You know, later on, and that's not going to hurt as long as they're. Especially if we've worded it up here, if we get down to five, yeah, we may 
but as we're into here, 2.15, maybe replace it with either this or just replace it with this. Does anybody would some? I get a second to put the penalty code, revi um, violation of ethics code in here to fill in what, what, what we struck out. Tara, are you moving? I would make that? a motion to and adopt some language to be. Paragraph of 3.15, lease summit. Yeah, three point, the, the first yeah. part of that would be yeah. like the model language that's, here. That's right. Yeah. And then, the, yeah, I, I'll second that okay. motion. All in, all in favor of using that paragraph from the lease summit charter this in 2.15? Yeah. Yes. If you want to. If you want to give her a second to actually yeah, sure. put that in there, and then you all can have discussion on it before before you vote. And then we'll re put the whole thing, watch the count goes. May cause, I, I don't like that language very much. Or may constitute a cause. Right. May constitute a cause, is that what, what you mean? Well, it's a PDF, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It won't let me. Will it? May constitute a cause. Yeah, and I think that might keep it from being so, so you ain't picking pepper out of nap poop. It's contingent on the supermajority determining whether it's for cause. Right. That's the next section of it. And this will be addressed in the um, ethics. Five, five. Five 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 four five five both will agree. This is this is for charter. This, what the language that she's putting in now is the is from the lease summit charter. That's I mean that which is again just language that I'm what I'm now hearing you all like. Right. Separately from what you all are doing, the the there's the mayor's uh, advisory commission on ethics reform that is also putting a list of recommendations together. The majority of their work is gonna focus on Article 5. And so to, so there may, there, there will, you know, be some overlap and then, then some potential for some of these sections to interact with each other. And once you all have those recommendations, it's up to you to decide how you wanna use them or not. Again, that you're an independent body from them. Right. They, they are, they were set up to look, take kind of a deeper dive into this Mm -hmm. uh, into the ethics issues within, you know, mostly within the charter. It's not even, their work is not exclusively contained to the charter, okay. but obviously that's a big part of it. So w what I think we're, we're saying is at some point you'll get those recommendations and then it's up to you all how you want to use those and whether you want to revisit other sections or not. They in turn may see have... what we've done and go. Yeah, We well, don't need to get question. that deep because it's been how correct. Is the concern for a violation ethics or charter how does it get started i mean how does someone how does a member of the council initiate? do they initiate the action and then they put it to a vote if it doesn't get two-thirds or then get the super majority then it doesn't count right nice on the line that has been the problem no one knows where to well, even start yeah, how do you start that? You can. I can tell you all day long. You violated the charter. That's a charter right. violation. And but I've done that many times. <laughs> but there's no. <laughs> I've said that many, yeah, many, many, right. many, many times. But then there, it's so, so what, right? Exactly. I've got the vote, so go take a hike. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you don't like that, you need to sue me, and that's that's what I hope that we can resolve here in some way. Well, it seems to me that we this becomes very political if you're leaving it. You're saying well. But two thirds of the city council determine whether it's a violation of decide whether they boot them or not. You're absolutely correct. And you have one city council, let's say if somebody's got a bird under their saddle for that person, and they're out of there. Yeah. I don't think the city council should be policing the problem. I, I, the other hand, I do think it needs to be an outside. I do. On the other hand, there wouldn't be, there is nothing. Excuse me? There, on the other hand, there is nothing. Say you got somebody running rough shot or violating, going, working with administrative officers, or a, a, say a member of council, as I think what this describes, Mr. City Councilor. So if a guy on the council's um, or girl is trying to run rough shot on somebody in the sewer district or uh, an office man, something, hey, that's not right. I'm going to complain. Then there's nothing they can do without this. It's a 
wait till election time or shame. This would give them the ability to address it. Is that? Yeah, yes, I agree with everything. I agree with everything you're saying. There, there is currently a lack of process and accountability for violations. So if, 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 uh, wow, that was great. That was. <laughs> well, so like if I'm going down, I'm the council down. member, and I'm going down <laughs> telling the dog catcher director trying to pull some phony crap. There's absolutely nothing. Or you call it political if there is. I don't mean call it at that, but I mean if you don't label it political. The, the council right now, uh, just for example, right now, they know which way the wind is blowing. I totally agree. Yeah. And they know that uh, we can do whatever we want because we've got the supermajority. And that's, I, I think any councilman should be able to initiate a concern. It doesn't mean that that goes to the... To a prosecutor or whatever. Right. Like, I think that's what this. Those things I feel like that's what we fixed. Is here's some descriptions from 2.15, and then we blocked out the part that says we want 50 bucks for being a jerk or a, you know, whatever. We can still take money. We don't. Okay. <laughs> but we go down and say if we hit a level that rises to the complaint. This council's not going to, they're not my favorite part, whatever, but this rises to the level of, I see exactly what you're saying about, you can certainly pick politics out of this, but it would be worse politics if there's absolutely no resolution to somebody that is, either whether abusing a power, a knowledge of someone in an office. Should I go with the ethics? Well, I think the city manager probably knows what's going on if you have some, have city council members going around you and interfering with your employees or people that you're supervising, I doubt that you appreciate that very much. And the question is, what do you do about it? Somebody's going to complain, but then to leave it up to the city council, again, as we said, maybe this particular person, mm -hmm. he's got all the votes. And so nothing happens. Or you have someone that doesn't have any votes and they boot him. I just don't think it should be a political, political process. Mr. Walker, hypothetically, if an employee came to you complaining about a council member interfering with their job duties, would you contact that council member and try to resolve it? I would, so I have weekly meetings with each of the council members and I would you know, in that meeting, bring that up that that concern had been brought to me. Wouldn't say who, but, you know, it's been brought to my attention. And, you know, is there some way that I can help you get the information that you need without, you know, you putting yourself in a bad spot and putting <coughs> staff in a difficult position? If they, you know, didn't take well to that conversation, then I would probably try to talk to their peers on the council and see if they could self-police that issue. But after that, I've pretty much exhausted my options. Right. I, so we I, I don't see it as being, I, I understand that if you've got a, you know, sort of what someone has called a super majority on the council, that you see that as being political. But I don't see this language as being political. I, I agree that it, that would be, have to be that would have to be seven seven political people versus one that's truly doing something wrong. Okay. Versus, well, they they just don't like. No, that's not. You know, I think that we're elected people. We think have the integrity and the ability to do the job, and we're not. I'm going to run for the, all these head to try to get this one. I, I don't. I mean, I see what you're saying. I got the part about. It could certainly happen. Look at it now, 16, 17, 18 votes for the Speaker of the House in Washington, D.C. Now, you talk about some long-term stuff, but here, there's there's no way to respond to an HR complaint, city manager complaint, the department head, and I think 2.15, I would, I would make a motion to move to, to, to pass this language that we have, that we've, the changes we've made, and then as if we if we're in the depth side of it in Article Five, you know we refer. But I certainly think that if there's nothing that you could do now, I think you're spinning your wheels if we don't have something. 
the beginning of this section, we were going to replace with the wording out of the model charter or lease summits. Are we still going to do that? Well, instead of instead of the language we've got, uh, it's, the, yeah, it's B and C. similar to it's the first part similar. of this. It's very similar. And I don't know if we if this streamlines what's there or we're just going to stick with what we've got. I think it looks short. I think it because it's a long column. I do. Yeah. And I think the sheet of paper. Has. But and, I'd make the motion. Be, I don't know. I'd make a motion to pass the changes we've made that that we've discussed here on two point one five. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he was just waiting. Wait, I want yeah. to talk. Oh, <laughs> uh, so I, I think that this last sentence is very necessary, but I think it needs some more work. I think we need to discuss it further on down the line, and I will vote against uh, this motion. This one, I don't think that it's, I think that it spills out of place. I think you could put it in almost every paragraph in this charter. It needs to go in the ethics section to cover the big picture. But I agree with Tom. I think you can take that out in, in section five in the ethics. You're going to cover everything that's in that charter, basically. And that's a violation in, in chapter five in the ethics when it comes to that. That just makes I would at least like to wait shit. until we see <laughs> what the ethics sure. committee comes back sure. with. And also what I hear is there's no process. See if in that we can add a That's process. <laughs> yeah, <I think> <laughs> Let's That's remedy a problem. But my part was they may see what we've done because the language is condensed. It's decise. <clears throat> There, and go that is addressed in two one five. So it could be the be done by May thirtieth or somewhere in that time frame. We'll still be in section two. Oh, that is. <laughs> that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, at, at the council meeting. At the council meeting last night, uh, originally the the advisory commission on ethics reform was scheduled to be to conclude on March thirtieth. Uh, so the end of this month. Uh, they requested and the council last night granted uh, an extension of their terms and of the body itself through May 31st. And so uh, the uh, unless something changes, they will have their work concluded by May 31st. But it has already changed. Uh, it, it changed last night from yeah, the date they, they extended it they extended it by two months last night. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Now that I look at this language, I think it needs we need to take out this charter or adopted ethics code. I think it should be this section. But and would I can you, withdraw the motion. And we'll we want to withdraw it, and we can come back to it. Yeah, I can absolutely, or we can fail it. But yes, or I can withdraw the motion okay. and the second. Okay. Yeah. Do what? John, with there's got to be some process. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, okay. I agree. Okay, okay. so that's with. So I'm going to consider that motion withdrawn, yeah. Yeah. and we are going to make a note to come back to that section to to look at penalties. Okay. Do you, okay. So. Do you so that last. The, uh, so we want to take the stricken part. The, leave the stricken part out of it because that's the fine, the twenty-five. Did you like it? Is I guess. Change the color. Does that make sense, you guys? If I made the motion Something. to leave, take this, leave the stricken part out. That takes out the Jackson County prosecution, the twenty-five yeah. to five hundred. Yes. Um, I think we already did. We already make a motion in path to, to do the stricken language. I don't remember. I, I <laughs> make a motion. We leave it alone the way it is until we can get something that we like. I, I think you know, we're kind of doing it piecemeal. Well, we. I think we all agree that. Yeah, the Jackson the County prosecutor. Jackson County prosecutor. We have no authority over the Jackson no, County we prosecutor. We haven't got anything to replace it. So why do anything at this moment? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not going to hurt to leave it if we're going to skip it to come back to it. Well, we at least made the process of skip the, 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 the monetary fines from a body that doesn't have the authority to do it, unless the Jackson County prosecutor, that's all I'm saying, is we're looking at logistics, 
kind of fine lining it. I think that that language we all agree is coming out. We could do that now. And then whether we are attaching B and C. We can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Back to the yeah so let's, okay. do you want to do that? Sure. Make the I'll motion to leave the stricken part I'll stricken. Work on the it's like it is on screen right Yeah, like it is on the screen. Leave it stricken. I'll, I'll, second, I'll second that motion. Okay, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry about that. This call. All right. Okay. So we're leaving it like stricken. Yes, yeah, just like yeah, stricken. We're <laughs> stricken. Just stricken. to be clear, because there was a lot of back and forth. What? Oh, yeah. Sorry. What? What you all just? What you all did they vote? Did they actually vote? I think so. Okay. Yeah, we so. What you all just voted on was just to remove That's right. that language, correct? Yes. yes. Everyone's clear on yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because I was. <laughs> I'm having a hard time. I'm looking at three different screens or different portions. I do have one thing to say. It may seem like that all these folks, except me, are wasting their time. I think the time they spent is probably the most important part of what we've done so far, in that we've determined that there's no process and that language, just to have language up there with no meaning or no bite, is what we need to change. So I applaud you folks for that. Okay. okay, we have about 10 minutes left. Do you want to go on to 2.16? Council Rules of Procedure? I'd like to put in for an ex uh, a temporary extension to this committee. I'm thinking maybe next year. I was, I was doing the addition about you know one one or two pages per meeting and how many hours. I did some quick math. It's two years. Yeah, the numbers, they didn't say what year. They just said. <laughs> it's a hundred pages. Well, it's two years. It's huge. Oh, oh, right. They let me it's just coming. It's not August. I can tell you that. And I, it's pretty short. No, I think we should go. Yeah. Do we want to do 2.16? Yeah. Let's go to 2.16. Uh, Even if we're a little over, does everybody agree with that? We'll try to get some. It's, it's, a, pretty, it's a pretty, it's a pretty succinct point. section. Yeah. Three times. So what's the process that we violate? <laughs> You have to buy pizza for us. Um, okay, 2.16, Council Rules of Procedure. I'll just state what I thought of when I read through this is that rules of procedure usually are not in charters. Um, however, I think it's important to have quorum and voter requirements in the charter. So as I looked at it, I thought maybe delete everything beginning with the word vacancies. Everything at the top, you mean down to vacancies? Um, start here. Well, it, I personally, I think this should come out. I think rules of procedure, they're, are, they are working on rules of procedure, correct? The council is? So it's one. They already have some rules. Right? So there are existing rules of procedure right now. Um, I, they have been amended a lot since 2017. Um, forget the numbers off the top of my head. And there is an effort so that there was a proposal to amend them again. That was tabled for further discussion. Uh, hasn't come back up yet, but that conversation was out there recently. Okay. I still, my opinion is rules of procedure should be separate, not in the charter. Um, something adopted by the council, probably, and looked at fairly frequently for amendment. So I, I guess I'll change what I said is that I would recommend we delete this section and um, with comment to the city council when it comes before them that we're recommending that it be moved into as uh, city code of ordinances or a yeah. policy or their own separate rules of procedure that they adopt. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, I, I totally yeah. agree. I agree with sure. that. Because if we're parallel on the work for the procedure, the work procedure, rules procedure. And I think uh, as council members change, yes, you know, that they're and their process may change. So they should be able to do that without having a vote of the people for 
Because that's charter the, amendment. That's the parliamentary procedure too. The, the one it vote does. per yeah. Yeah. Because when I read it, I because I when I left, I still listened to the end and was going down. And so my part was they have their parliamentary procedures: one man, one vote. Uh, Robert's rules of order. All yeah. The proceed the rules of order are in the it is the council. So I would. Um, I do. I do think that should be considered. Do you want to make a motion? I will make a motion. Okay. So the motion is to delete two point one six with the recommendation to the city council that it be uh, rules of procedure be adopted through their own process. Second. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. Well, I wasn't opposed. I was the attorney. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop there. We didn't get far, but I think we covered a lot of important sections. It's going to help us further on down the road. Yes. Right. Yeah. I would make a motion to adjourn. Or we I do various? have. Um, we okay, do have. <laughs> before we do that, um, other business. I. I'm hoping to be on vacation at the next meeting. I'm going to try to attend over Teams, but I do want to step down as chair for that meeting, unless my plans get canceled. And so um, our vice chair will run the meeting. I just want to make that announcement, and then I'll assume chair again when I come back. Out of control. He's in charge of good after five thirty. Any other any other other business from anyone? Okay, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second? So second. All in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned.